Killer Mike, he takes us to church once again on this Michael epilogue. What's good, y'all? It's your boy, Mixtape Moth. If you are rocking with this content, go ahead and smash that like button for your boys. That is greatly appreciated. Also, subscribe if you haven't. But today, I'm going to hit y'all with my thoughts on this new Killer Mike album entitled Michael and the Mighty Midnight Revival Songs for Sinners and Saints. So, Killer Mike is a part of Southern rap royalty in 2023 this dungeon family veteran uh, released what could be argued as the album of the year uh, with also managing to take home three grammy awards but this new project michael and the mighty midnight revival songs for sinners and saints is somewhat of an extension of, of his 2023 michael album in that it does address similar themes and uh, stylistically it's just adjacent to that project. I have to point out that many of the background vocals and harmonizing on this project uh, comes from an actual gospel choir uh, called The Mighty Midnight Revival. But this thing contains just 10 songs lasting approximately 39 minutes. But with that being said, let me go ahead and just hit y'all with that track by track breakdown. The opener, Bussin' Bricks intro, uh, mixes in some 60s soul uh, with that sped up uh, Dead Press hip hop bassline. Uh, the end result is a rugged banger to set it off. And Killer Mike is rapping aggressively, talking about surviving and dodging the haters who want to see him laid out. Mike states, it don't matter about our valor if the system say we villains. And I'm all Atlanta from the start and to the ending. I work a job and break my back and serve a sack to feed my children. So all together, uh, a punchy opener and that Mickey Murray the gospel soul sample goes pretty hard. Check two, Nobody Knows with Anthony Hamilton has a joyous gospel backdrop. You get those uplifting keys and soulful crooning from the choir and Anthony Hamilton. It is kind of hard to miss with Anthony Hamilton on a chorus like this. Uh, and Mike reflects back to when he was in the trap with I think about when I was a young man, I was rolling rock. I sold a product that would share a name with soda pop. Then there are lines that speak to his spiritual journey with my transformation undergoing and it's showing, staying and going, reaping and sowing. I ain't slowing. I could write about the evil like I'm Donald Goins. So as a whole, this is one of the standouts that I feel sonically uh, reminded me of a track or two off Michael. Right after is the soulful banger, Humble Me, uh, which has some booming 808s and a triumphant sample. On this one, Killer Mike, he's asking for humility while also talking that talk. I mean, you gotta have that balance. Uh, but he does speak on the troubles he faced following the Grammys. I won at the Grammys for spitting my grammar. Did that for Atlanta. Did that for Atlanta, bruh. Swept up like a janitor. Got sent to the slammer, bruh. So yeah, Humble Me, it's one of those bangers that you're likely going to feel uh, his passion and the conviction in his bars. And the beat really slaps. Track 4, Higher Level, is also a gem. Now this has some syrupy keys and cloudy trap drums. That's... Makes it a little trippy, but also glorious. And the Trillville sample in the background is a nice touch, but what impressed me the most here was the pocket that Mike was flowing in. I mean, he really spazzed. I just can't stress how much I dug the rhyme schemes throughout. Yeah, this felt like a glorious trap sermon. Next is Exit 9, Scenic Root, which is essentially a remix uh, from the predecessor, but this time feature an offset. The lyrics are the same, but the instrumental is different. And if I had to compare the two, I'd probably say I like this slightly more, but not by much. But really, they're probably similar in quality. Track six, Lord Prepare Me, has a much slower uh, meditative beat uh, that is very gospel inspired. There's a verse from Belly Gang Cushington and vocals from Jane Hancock. And while I found this to be a solid song, it's probably my least favorite. And uh, while I could appreciate the introspection uh, and the spiritual themes, uh, this track kind of dragged on a bit longer than I liked. And I think that was due to the uh, extra minute long piano passage at the end. There is Slummer for Junkies, uh, a two part 10 minute track that combines lyrics from both uh, Slummer and Something for Junkies from Michael. Now in theory, 
uh, this is a creative reworking of the two tracks. That's not bad at all, uh, but it does make for a pretty long listen for one uh, song, and instrumentally, uh, I didn't find it as compelling as its predecessor. Still, it is a theatrical enough record that's movie-like, and I did like this Sly uh, and the Family Stone Everyday People interpolation. Yeah, as a whole, uh, Slumber for Junkies is pretty cool for what it is. Following this is Had to Get It, which has another definitive gospel uh, tinged beat. There's just one verse and a hook, uh, making it feel a bit unfinished ultimately. That's not to say it's bad, but it does come across as more of an interlude. Uh, the beautifully sung vocals from Troy Durden was a great addition though. Then the last two songs take on a completely different twist. Sonically, uh, you have track 9, 97 uh, three six freestyle, which pays homage to that Memphis sound and three six mafia, and is backed by a darker atmospheric beat from DJ Paul that was smooth but still unnerving. You could just feel the tension in Mike's vocals. It is one of the standouts, and Killer Mike is talking his talk, reminding us that even though he's a man of God, uh, he'll still <laughs> f you up, like when he said. I stand up in court and lie, want a hand on the Bible because I don't rat on my Cody's or my mother effing rivals. It's Michael. Some other dope lines were, man, I'm a leader that is hated by elitists. My life ain't been the sweetest. Ain't no bowl of Reese's Pieces. So yeah, you are getting some of that defiance, uh, some of that lyrical aggression from Killer Mike. That is a nice change up from some of the slower, more meditative tracks prior. And I can't help but envision the possibilities of, let's say, a DJ Paul and a Killer Mike collab album. Just think about that for a second. Sounds pretty spectacular, right? This project stays in that Memphis trap lane with the very gutter still talking that shit featuring Key Glock and Project Pat. So we are getting uh, the best of the old and new Memphis scene. Now this reworks the talking that shit uh, instrumental produced by DJ Paul from Michael. And while I love Key Glock and Project Pat on this, I really felt Michael was the MVP in terms of flow. He just really went in with that crazy energy and delivery. Uh, some bars were, you gotta respect me like a mother effing Grammy winner, like I cooked your favorite rapper like a Grammy dinner. Grammy dinner, excuse me. But yeah, this track really captures that classic uh, Memphis aesthetic to a T. And it's a hard as nails way to close it out. So overall, I'm gonna give this project a rating of four mics. While it's not as polished or as ambitious as his 2023 album, it's still a good introspective listen. It does show uh, more of Mike's uh, spiritual growth over the course of the last year. Production-wise though, it may come across as cutting room floor or a little rough around the edges. Uh, maybe that was intentional, but it's it's a good listen if you are, you know, into Southern gospel, Atlanta hip hop. I still can't see it gaining the traction of Michael, uh, but I don't think that was his intention here. Rather, I think he just wanted to continue to explore and revisit some of these themes that worked really well for him on that Michael project. But at the end of the day, I totally uh, understand someone viewing this release as like a B-Sides remix type of album. My favorite tracks include Bustin' Bricks intro, Nobody Knows, Humble Me, Higher Level, 9736 Freestyle, and still talking that shit. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section. It's your boy, Mixtape Mob. I'm signing out, but as always, it's peace and blessings. Killer Mike, Songs for Sinners and Saints, one.